Okay, so here's the chicken that um, Peter Cheek was, was talking about. This is the standard way in which, um, I don't know, probably 99.9% .9 of American chicken is produced, but maybe it's uh, 99 point something less than nine, I couldn't say for sure. Um, this is a huge shed, um, sometimes called a hangar, because it looks almost uh, like an, an aircraft hangar. Um, it may hold 20,000 chickens. They're uh, brought in when they're, when they're young chicks, um, and then they have a reasonable amount of space. They, but as they grow, they fill up that space. And as you can see by this stage, when they're getting ready to be uh, taken, taken off to be killed, um, they cover most of the, the floor area. They're fed through uh, these feeders that run down the length of the shed, which carry food and water down to the, to the chicks. Uh, one of the factors I said, these ones are pretty much ready for being sold. They've been bred to grow extremely fast. The um, modern chicken reaches market weight in about uh, six weeks, so around 42 days. Um, and that's uh, probably less than half of what they used to if you go back a, a generation or so. And there are a number of, of welfare problems um, with this. One of the, the, the problems is because they grow so fast, their bones are immature to carry the weight that they have. So a number of these birds, will, their, will, their legs will just collapse under them because they're not strong enough to, to bear their body weight. And when their legs collapse under them, then um, if they happen to be somewhere in the middle, they're not uh, next to the food and water, they're just going to die. They, they're not going to be able to move, and they're going to die from lack of water. Uh, it's very unlikely that anybody is going to walk through the shed and notice that they have uh, a problem. And if they did, well, I guess they would simply give them a quicker death. They would wring their neck. Um, but there's no veterinary care or anything like that because it just doesn't pay. The individual bird isn't worth enough. You know, chicken is a cheap product, and uh, chicken before it's, it's slaughtered and dressed is, is worth even less. So um, somebody will walk through the sheds. Uh, once a day and they'll notice if a bird has died because its legs collapsed under it and it couldn't get any food and uh, they'll pick up the, the corpses um, but that's about all that is, is going to happen. So that's, um, that's one welfare problem. Another welfare problem is that you have 20,000 birds in this shed um, and of course their droppings are just accumulating on the floor. So the atmosphere is full of ammonia. If you ever walk into one of these sheds that's probably the first thing you notice is that um, the ammonia gets in your eyes and uh, you feel it in your lungs when you breathe. And, and workers don't like going into the sheds for that reason. And the, the droppings are not even cleaned out every six weeks when the birds are taken out. They're often left there for an entire year um, just to pile up. Uh, so the birds are living in that heavily ammonia atmosphere all the time, and I think there's no doubt that it's a problem for them as well. So here's another shot from the bird's eye view, which um, shows the density. Um, I think it's very likely, too, um, that the birds are stressed just from the crowding. If you have um, chickens in a normal farmyard, maybe I mentioned this when talking about the de-beaking, they get to know each other as individuals. Um, but here, with 20,000 birds in a shed, there's uh, obviously no possibility of that, and they're quite likely to be uh, stress just from constantly running into strangers, um, but uh, there's, there's nothing that's, that gets done about that, obviously. So um, that's intensive uh, chicken production uh, for meat. Um, I talked previously about the caged hens that are producing uh, eggs. Um, again, most of the eggs produced in America come from hens kept like this, um, though there is now, as compared to chicken, there's probably a somewhat higher percentage, maybe, maybe it's up to 2% of eggs that are kept from hens that are not in cages, that are cage-free. And you can see them at, at uh, many supermarkets. But, um, so you have the, the tiers of uh, cages here, and uh, again, you can, you can actually see the droppings piling up at the bottom of the cage, this mess below each cage is uh, uh, are the birds' accumulated droppings. And these birds are actually, unlike the fast-breeding 
uh, meat uh, broilers, these birds will be in this cage for a year or 18 months. Um, they're, they're not put in the cage as chicks, they're put in the cage when they get ready to lay, which is um, uh, at a few months of age, uh, and then they'll be kept there for uh, at least a year. The, um, the cage uh, floors slope down so that the eggs roll into this area here. You can see the eggs, and um, that means that it can all be mechanized. So one of the reasons for doing this is labor saving. It, um, you don't, nobody has to go around collecting the eggs by hand. They all, uh, the cage has a sloping floor, so they roll into this uh, front, and then there's a conveyor belt that carries the eggs up to the sorting room at the end. Also, the, uh, the food and water comes uh, through automatically into a, a trough in front of the cage. So it's a kind of mechanized system, um, and that's one of the reasons why it's cheaper than alternative systems, which uh, do require more labor input. You can see here again how crowded the birds are, and um, I mentioned the, the pecking that goes on, and also they're likely to be rubbing against each other and against the wire. So this is a very fortunate battery hen, because normally at this point, this hen is roughly at the end of its laying period, so it's been in the cages for a year or 18 months, and normally they get thrown out, basically. They have very little commercial value. They might be used for something like uh, chicken soup, chicken stock powder, or something of that sort, but um, they're not going to be eaten. They're not the tender young birds that people will, will eat. Um, but you can see from this bird how um, she's lost most of her feathers. She's got, uh, she's got just pink skin showing at the rump and around the neck, and the other feathers have been greatly removed. So that's from uh, either pecking from her other hens, or it's from uh, rubbing against the wire and rubbing against each other. One of the interesting things is this is an organization called Compassion Over Killing, which um, purchased some battery hens and let them get out on grass. So these are birds that have never been on grass. Um, they've been, as I said, for the first few months of their lives, they might have been in a big shed like the one you saw for the uh, broilers. Um, and then they've been in those wire cages. But you put them out on grass, and their instincts are still there. So uh, they'll start chasing insects around. Um, they'll um, try and find a bit of dirt to dust bathe in. Dust bathing is something that hens do. They, they fluff up a bit of dirt around under their feathers. Um, that's a, a natural instinct that they have. And most importantly of all, um, when they're ready to lay an egg, uh, and these birds will still lay, although they're not laying at a high enough rate to justify the commercial egg producers keeping them, but they will still uh, lay eggs. Uh, when they're ready to do that, they will try and build some sort of nest. So they'll use some grass material, or they'll get into a sheltered spot, and um, they'll build up a nest. And people who study hen behavior say that this is actually a very strong instinct, um, that they don't like to lay an egg out in the open, um, uh, they uh, will very much prefer to lay one in a sheltered area. And as a result of that research, the European Union now <coughs> requires, although it still allows you to hen keep hens in cages, the cages are significantly larger than American cages, and they have to have a kind of nest box area. So there has to be an area that the hens can go into one at a time, and lay their eggs, and it's a sort of protected space. And they all do that. If you give them that opportunity, they will lay their eggs in that protected space rather than out in the open. It's presumably an uh, inherited instinct that uh, it was to protect their eggs when they were in the wild, to have them somewhere sheltered and to have somewhere where, if they hatch, they can then rear the chicks. OK, uh, enough on eggs. Let's just go back to that slide of the pigs. So this is um, an intensive pig farm. Um, and again, the great majority of uh, America's pig production comes from pigs who have been kept like this. They um, are in pens that are, are group pens. Um, but as you can see, they also get very crowded. Um, and they have just about nothing to do in those spaces. Um, they interact with each other a little bit, but uh, pigs are intelligent, playful animals. Um, they like to have things to do, and, and here they're simply in bare pens 
until they're, they get ready to be killed. But um, an even bigger problem with pig production is the way in which the mothers of these pigs are treated. So these are the pigs that actually go to market that get turned into the uh, pork or bacon or ham. Um, but again, there is a separate kind of treatment for their mothers, the breeding sows, um, which here is one example. So the standard way of keeping breeding sows is to individually consign, uh, confine them in pens. Um, this is a pen with a concrete floor and just metal bars. Um, this is a slightly different kind of pen with a slatted floor. Um, and essentially these, these animals are breeding machines. So their role for the producer is to have litters quickly, to have large litters, um, and otherwise to require as little food and as little labour, so as little cost as possible. So um, the reason for keeping them individually is partly again to reduce labour. Um, they're easy to manage. They're not going to fight with each other or anything like that. You're not going to have a stronger sow taking food from a weaker sow. Um, you can just individually feed them all. Uh, these are problems that with decent kind of management, decent labour, skilled labour, you can solve, but this is a quicker way of doing it. Um, there's no bedding, as you saw the previous one was bare concrete, this one is uh, metal slats. That's again for, for ease of cleaning. Um, if you gave them straw, they would be more comfortable, they would bed down on it, they would also play with it, it would give them something to do. But straw costs money, and more important perhaps, you have to bring it in, you have to throw it out when it gets soiled. With this system, you just uh, hose the feces and urine down the slats or off the concrete floor, um, and you don't need uh, any skilled labour at all, you just you need very minimal labour. So these sows are in this situation for most of their lives because their purpose is to breed and they're pregnant for most of their lives. When they get ready to give birth, um, they're still confined typically. This is, uh, the other one was what's called a gestation crate for during pregnancy. This is a farrowing crate, farrowing is the term used for giving birth. Um, and uh, here she's got her piglets. Again, if you gave her more room and if you gave her straw, um, pretty much in a way almost like a hen, she would bed down on the straw and build a kind of nest and keep the pigs close to her. Um, but this is uh, a way that avoids the need to provide straw, avoids labour. And another reason for using it is occasionally a sow will roll on top of her piglet and, and uh, suffocate it. Um, and this prevents that happening. But if you have plenty of space and, and straw, sows normally are, are good mothers and won't do that. So she, she um, nurses the pigs uh, for about three weeks after birth and then they're taken away from her because as long as she's nursing she won't be fertile and won't get pregnant again. But they, the producer wants her to get pregnant quickly so they take the piglets away long before she would wean them in a natural state and um, then they bring her back on heat. Uh, she may be artificially inseminated, she may be put with a boar, but as soon as she's pregnant she'll go back in the uh, stalls that you saw. And that may happen three or four times um, and after that her fertility will start to decline. Again, like the hens, she would still produce piglets, but she won't produce as many piglets. And so it's cheaper to uh, send her off to be killed and to bring in a new sow. Uh, 